Hi, my name is Louise Wilson. I'm an entrepreneur, business coach, and soul coach for fellow entrepreneurs that are looking to create the abundant business they dream of. I take a very different approach to business than most experts out there in that I blend the worlds of spirituality and business. Using my unique framework and approach, I guide my clients to connect with the most powerful version of themselves, their soul, so that they can reclaim their spiritual superpowers and release the deep subconscious beliefs at a present life, past life and ancestral level that are preventing them from experiencing the success they know they are capable of achieving. In this video, I'm gonna share with you five hacks you can do to help you address any feelings you may have of confusion, dissatisfaction, or that you aren't or don't feel that you have enough in your life. And my number one tip is this, the fastest way to transform your life is to change your identity. Because it's your identity, your thoughts, beliefs, emotions, behaviors, and actions that are actually responsible for determining the results you currently have in your life. Unfortunately, I had to discover this super simple truth the hard way. See, at an early age, I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. However, my experience in the education system led me to believe that I could never be an entrepreneur, that I didn't have it within me to achieve that kind of success. As a result, I wasted 15 years of my life stumbling around wearing an identity that in no way served me, nor was it anywhere near close to being a reflection of who I truly am or what I'm capable of doing. Way back then, I just didn't believe in myself and I was afraid of everything. I would never venture beyond the safety of what I knew, aka my comfort zone. I only ever went for jobs I 100% knew that I could get and where's the growth in that? And if I was going on holiday, everything had to be planned out in advance. Where's the space for magic and adventure to unfold? Make no mistake, your identity, who you think you are, your daily self-talk, drives your actions, your choices, your decisions, and your behaviors. And that is what determines how your life unfolds. If you don't like your life, if you don't like what you have in your life, then you have to change who you are being. And if you find yourself sitting there wondering, what are my first steps? What can I do right now to change my identity? Well, did you know that your soul can powerfully guide you? And if the concept of having a soul feels a little uncomfortable for you or out there, I have to ask you if you feel the same discomfort around the notion of having a soulmate or a soul purpose. See, for many, we can perhaps more easily accept the concept of having a soulmate. So why not stretch the boundaries of your beliefs to believing that you also have a soul that you can powerfully call on to guide you to be your infinitely best self so you can live your infinitely best life. After all, everything we think is simply a belief that we choose to believe or not. So why not try a little experiment just for the next little while, I want to invite you to pay attention and to notice how your soul is actually guiding you. Try it. What have you got to lose? Your soul can guide you towards changing your world. Right now, your soul may be nudging you to ask for that raise or to go for a promotion or to start your own business or a family, maybe even write a book or start to work for a non-profit, save the environment. The question is, are you listening? And then taking action on those intuitive nudges and prompts. Or are you choosing to take counsel from your ego, your logical, critical, analytical mind that's giving you all the reasons why not to step out of your comfort zone? So you can only ever find out what you are really capable of achieving by stretching yourself to do things you've never done before, to feel all of the feels, the fear, anxiety, discomfort, all of it, and then to do that darn thing anyway. Remember, there's a reason why they're called growing pains, because growing can feel painful, scary, and uncomfortable. 
And if I might venture to suggest that possibly one of the scariest things we may have ever done in our lives was to leave our mother's womb, to be thrust naked into a noisy, bright, chaotic world where we don't speak the language, we have no money or belongings, and we just have to trust that everything is gonna be okay. And then there's those final moments in our lives when we find ourselves looking back on our life's journey. And the real question is, when your time comes, because it comes to us all, some sooner rather than later, but as you're sitting in your proverbial rocking chair or even lying on your deathbed, what will you be thinking then? Hopefully, you will feel happy with your choices, that you did everything in your power to be your best self so that you could live your best life. So right now, as you journey through the space in between, what will you choose to do and how will you choose to live your life? Will you harness the courage and faith that you had when you first came into the world? It is my hope that you won't have to experience what I experienced, where crisis had to show up in my life, forcing me to find out who I was capable of being and what I was actually capable of achieving. See, I had to lose everything before I could find the courage to take action on my dreams. Because when you feel as though you no longer have anything left to lose, you're willing to take those much needed risks. Doing things that scared me showed me how powerful and resilient I can choose to be. When you step into and act from your truest nature, you can finally reclaim your identity as a powerful being. Don't let crisis be your teacher. Take control, be the captain of your ship and allow your inner GPS, your soul to guide you, to help you uncover your infinitely best self so that you can live your infinitely best life. This is why I am obsessed with supporting my clients to connect with their soul so that they can reclaim their identity and spiritual superpowers, release the fears, self-doubt and subconscious beliefs at a present life, past life and ancestral level that are actually sabotaging their success and rise to create the abundant business and life they dream of. My second tip for addressing those feelings of dissatisfaction or that you aren't or don't feel that you have enough in your life is to know what you value most. When you know your values, you have a strong foundation on which to create a life you love. Once again, I had to learn this lesson the hard way. As always though, we teach what we most need to learn. See, in 2006, I established a very successful retail store, Rosie's, and I loved it. I created a beautiful space where we sold a very eclectic mix of art, books, clothes, pottery, jewelry, you name it. We also had a coffee shop, a hair salon, and healing rooms. However, in 2010, when I uncovered that my number one core value was freedom, I quickly realized that being tied to a bricks and mortar store ran completely counter to this core value. With this new awareness, I began to notice as my shifts rolled around that I started to feel unwell. That right there was a red flag. Something was definitely off. Even though the store was successful, it was clearly out of alignment with who I truly am and my core values. Now that the unconscious was conscious, now that I knew how important freedom is to me, this awareness and misalignment in who I was actually being was beginning to show up in my body. Our bodies keep score and we need to listen to them. I quickly realized that I had to make a change in my business and in my life. A change that was initially scary to do because it meant that I had to hire a full-time manager. However, once the manager signed on, it freed me up to fully focus my energy on my absolute passion and purpose in life, which is coaching fellow entrepreneurs to create the business they dream of. Knowing your top five core values can help you design a life that is a mirror reflection of the contours of your soul. Having an awareness of your values can also help you make those seemingly difficult decisions. For example, say you're offered a highly paid job that's gonna take you away from your family 
50% of the time, yet family is your number one core value. With this knowledge and awareness, you are now able to make a better informed decision and choice around what you need and want to do. My third tip for addressing those feelings of dissatisfaction or that you aren't or don't feel that you have enough in your life is to know your life and soul's purpose. Now you might find that your purpose springs forth from your values. Knowing your purpose in life and then taking action to live your purpose is fundamental to helping you create and live a life that's filled with peace, satisfaction, joy and purpose. And if you find yourself sitting there thinking, I'm not sure if I know what my purpose is, then please know that there is a place inside of you that does. And this part of you might already be trying to get your attention, whether it's through those intuitive nudges or prompts or feelings that something's off in your life or that something needs to change. Maybe you're feeling drawn to forge a new path please know that it's never too late to change until it's too late to change. I.e. once you reach your final rocking chair moment and hopefully when that time comes, you can look back on your life with zero regrets, knowing that you played full out and went for your dreams. When it comes to living life fully, please don't let your fears guide you. In order to live your best life, it's important for you to release fear and doubt and start following those intuitive prompts and nudges to do stuff that scares you. Again, I learned this lesson the hard way. I had to be in crisis before I was willing to take any risks in my life. Yet when I started to lean in, listen and follow my intuition, that is exactly when my life started to change for the better, when the magic really began to unfold. So if you have a dream that's nagging at you, remember it's coming from a place deep within you that absolutely knows you already have everything you need to achieve it. So it's your job and your goal to find that place, that person within you, to reclaim your truest nature and identity and power so that you can be and live your infinitely best life. This is the work that I love to support my clients in doing. My fourth tip for addressing those feelings of dissatisfaction or that you aren't or don't feel that you have enough in your life is to know how to raise your energetic frequency. Our energy is very much affected by our inner world, our thoughts, beliefs, feelings and emotions. So it's important that you're vigilant, that you're doing the work to release and let go of the beliefs, the emotions and feelings that are triggering and feeding those lower vibrational frequencies in your field. When you know how to shift your energy and frequency upwards to the frequency of the things you want to have and attract into your life, you will magnetize those things to you. This isn't woo, it's grounded in physics. Einstein said, match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. The challenge is that a lot of the beliefs that limit us are invisible to us as they're buried within our subconscious mind. And it is those beliefs that are feeding our emotions and driving our behavior. That's why I'm obsessed with helping my clients uncover and release the deep subconscious beliefs at a present life, past life and ancestral level that are actually repelling the success they dream of. Managing your energy takes commitment and practice. But to help you today, I'm gonna to share with you one very simple yet powerful tool you can use to raise your frequency, and that is to practice gratitude. The more you can regularly look for and express gratitude for your life and in your life, the more you're able to shift your mood and your energy and frequency. This is why so many teachers talk about the power and importance of, it, of expressing gratitude in your life. My fifth tip for addressing those feelings of dissatisfaction or that you aren't or don't feel that you have enough in your life is to let nature be your teacher. 
Nature is a powerful teacher and when you let her, she can guide you to being your best self. See, does a sunflower seed ever question its ability to blossom into a beautiful flower? Does it shrink back with fear and embarrassment when in the company of other beautiful flowers? Does it think, oh, I can't possibly shine or outshine any of the other flowers around me? Do you think that it thinks, well, in being my beautiful self, I might offend the other flowers around me? No, of course not. It just pops up, flourishes and shines for all to see. The tiniest of sunflower seeds can teach us so much about the power of accepting our truest nature and the importance of creating the right environment that supports our growth to becoming the best version of ourselves. We know that we need to nurture a seedling, that it needs the right conditions to grow. It needs good soil, proper nourishment, sunlight and water to flourish. And in the same way, it's our job to create the same nurturing and nourishing environment for ourselves so that we too can fully flourish and blossom and grow into being our infinitely best selves. In this way, we need to surround ourselves with people who love and support us and pay special attention to our thoughts, beliefs, feelings, and emotions, nurturing and promoting positive self-talk and those high vibe feelings. We also need to consistently weed out and clear from our minds and our energy field the thoughts, beliefs, and emotions that are limiting us, especially those deep subconscious beliefs that may be invisible to us. We need to do the work to locate them and release them. It's so important to release those beliefs that are limiting us, strangling our growth and our ability to shine brightly in the world.